stitch alongside first. So I have my two colors in ribbon on a straight stitch. We all like decorative, you know? It's just in our hands. Actually, I don't need to do the whole long thing, just to show you. So I'm going to sew the long side. And I'm sure people already know this way of turning stuff inside out, but I want to show you. You have your ribbon or whatever, cord or whatever it is, and you measure how long your thing is, plus a couple of inches, right? Then you slide your thing down, whatever it is you want to turn inside out. So now I have more ribbon hanging to my left than is connected to the working side of my roll. And I'm going to stitch across the short edge. Inch, hip top. Now I'm going to stitch the other long side. Trains are coming. So better than I am. Now, does it show? Do I show? Mm -hmm. Don't cut it off of your ribbon yet. Okay? Now you're going to come here. And you're going to pull the working end of this. We don't want to waste our ribbon. And I'm just sliding it onto that long piece that we left to turn it inside out. Now, if you want to salvage your ribbon, come here where your ribbon is connected and cut the two stitches that are holding your ribbon. And then just pull your ribbon out. So you haven't wasted your ribbon, right? This is one-seventh of a cent a mile. Now we want to press our tubes. Someone else didn't say crotch yet. Oh, well, <laughs> this goes above her crotch. Oh. So now we're going to press, and so you can do this any width, any colors. Make a better tube than I did. Mine was quick. That'll tighten it. So now we have a two colored tube. And actually, I'll just come back to the iron board. Um, so this is what we're trying to make, right? And you'll see on this one, I made my outside edge longer than my inside edge. So I, I got my two colored tube, and I'm going to cut it into perfect orange strips. That's three, that's three, whatever. Three and a half. Then... We, all, we can see what's going on. So I just have a ribbon or a, a piece of the same fabric here that I folded so I don't have any raw edges showing. And I place these guys every inch onto my ribbon. And then I folded and folded it to cover up this edge. Then down here I have two inches between each space. And as I hook them to this ribbon, I gave them all a twist in the exact same direction so that both sides of my I thought I had three. So that both sides of my ribbon shows. I think that explains it. Do I need I don't need to actually sew this, but you got what we're doing, right? Yeah. Um, but let's stick this on the tutu just for fun. Um, and if you're going to have an edge that you bend, you might want to, to cut it on the bias. If you, want, if you want your edge to curve around on here, cut, cut this part and this part on the bias, but still figure out your spacing. And you may even want to put your, your little twisted pieces on the first ribbon, kind of place it around your tutu. Then you can actually measure and see how much space should go between the bottom ribbons so that it continues evenly the whole way around. Can you show them close up how those are attached in here? Yeah. Ribbon. So let me take another piece of fabric and just kind of say, here's what I did. Um, so all I did, and I can show you with pins. We use pins as the sewing. Um, 
what I did to connect these is I laid my ribbons on the first the first pass. So it's the same for the first, the top row and the bottom row. I just laid them to my fabric and I stitched them down. I laid them on there and stitched a short raw edge to a long edge of my, my control band. Then I folded it over like this and I pressed it and then I folded the top and pressed it and then I folded it over my ribbons. So it, essentially I made my own double fold bias tape and I created the folds as I was ironing and sewing instead of trying to fold it ahead of time, I'll come out with more success doing it like that. Then I twisted them, and then I laid it on the tutu to figure out how wide it should be at the bottom. Because a lot of this stuff, there's not like an instant answer for, you know? But, oh, that looks cool. And then like, you know, you don't have to put little things hanging off of them, but I love the stuff, so I hung some little things off of them. Um, yeah, that's that one. That's that one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, we're, we're doing good. We're doing good. Well. We're doing well. There is less water in a lake than in the ocean, but I have fewer items at the checkout. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But the checkout still says less. Huh? Except Whole Foods. No. Is it fewer? It says 15 <laughs> items or fewer. Um, in fact, I explained that to a high schooler at Mariano's the other day, and he didn't care. Did you really do that? Yeah. Sick. I, I went to the lane and he said, this is 15 or less. And I said, well, I have 11 or fewer. <laughs> so, okay. This next one, um, this is kind of an ugly thing that I made, but I want to show you this. Because um, everybody likes petals and stuff, right? Um, so, what I did... And I will, I will show you kind of the pieces behind this. And this is one that you'll re-watch or write it down. So what we have here is a bagged thing. So a bagged is when you stitch around the edge of something and turn it inside out. So like bag a leaf, bag a petal. So I can put my hand inside there. But by bagging it, I'm able to press the edge really nice and get a nice edge with my piping. Um, so here's, here's the steps to do that. So what it is is the inside is actually bagged first. This hole is bagged with a piece of netting. And then I piped the outside, put another piece of netting, and bagged the whole thing. And I will show you this, um, which is why we're going to go a few minutes over. So I, t I made my pattern for my hole. And whatever shapes you want, you can put holes in them. It looks more expensive. And the first thing I did is I drew my pattern on a piece of netting. So I have a piece of netting and my fancy silver crinkle chiffon, uh, and I've drawn my shape. So the first thing I'm going to do is stitch through. So I drew my shapes on netting, and then I stitched them through to the outside. You'll never see it, but I can see the stitches on the outside. So the first thing I'm going to do is take pink bias and stitch it around my hole. That, that didn't sound good. So we'll come back. I think I think I can do the rest of this from the machine. Um, I just need to get a foot. This is Symphony and Sia. So this is the same way that you can finish off a flower petal or something. Can I have a little light where I can do it? Just a little. Is that too much? Is that too much? So white. There. That's good. Or try to, yeah. That's good so right there. I'm going to explain to you what I'm doing, and then I'll hold it up to the camera. So I've got just cording, and I've got bias. And I've stitched first the hole that I'm trying to uh, make a nice edge. I want to make, a, I want to outline this cutout with bias. So I also have to think about like which side does the raw side of the bias go to it goes to the inside or the, the unpiped edge of my piping goes to the inside. So I'm going to stitch that around is step one. Actually, I'm going to just stitch off a circle 
So it leaves me. I'm not really following my line. Is that okay? Is it? Yeah, it is for me. So I'm going to make uh, just a loop that we're going to cut a hole into. Without the light, I can't see my line. Maybe I need new glasses. I've actually uh, heard people, we had some tutus at Houston that had a technique similar to this, and we call them the stained glass tutus because inside the spaces they filled with different kinds of organs and stuff. So to make a cutout, I first piped my cutout, right? So I have the raw part of my piping on the inside of my hole. Then I need to take another piece of netting, which I've got right here. This is magic stuff. And I, it doesn't matter what size my netting is, as long as it's bigger. So I'm going to cut. And I want it to reach to the edges of my whole piece. I want it bigger than everything, my piece of netting. So now I'm going to lay my piece of netting on there and pin it in more places than I am. And now I'm going to re-stitch my netting. Voila, back stitch or overlap it a little bit. This thing is so class. I failed if it was. Now I'm gonna come in with good sharp scissors or painting shears, whatever you want. At this point, is there net on the bottom also? Yeah, so first my silver chiffon stuff, I took a piece of netting and I drew the lines that I want my finished piece to be, right? Then I piped my cutout, my my hole. And now I'm cutting through all the layers. So I've cut completely through everything. And then I want to notch this sucker so that it will lay over nice. And I overlap my piping in a pretty way, too. So I kind of ran the piping off to the inside so it looks good. And you'll put better clips in than I did. And I'm going to press this inside out. I'm a tragedy. So this, so we're at piece two of netting, right? But having that piece two of netting, which is how you can manipulate and then press a nice cutout. Huh? Huh? Look at that. So now I have a cutout where I can put a motif or a different fabric or my beautiful dyed tutu will show through. Or maybe I put this over my Rachel like that. I mean, there's so much you can do with this. So the next step is to pipe the outside edge. So I'm going to do that really quick. And actually, um, what I should do first so that I can see what I'm doing is pin this again. Pin your the piece of netting you just turned around. Pin that. I'm not going to pin. And stitch around there. My piece isn't going to be symmetrical, but that's okay. It's not even going to be flat. It's a little flat. It's mostly, it's mostly flat. The fabric is <laughs> So now I've married my next two pieces of, or my next piece of netting together. Then I'm going to pipe the outside edge, maybe in a different color or the same. And I'm going to just do a chunk of it so we can show you this last thing. Because I think, I think the idea is, should be happening. The aha. So now, I would pipe around this whole thing, but I'm going to just pipe around part of it. I 
think I can have fun in this, right? Mm -hmm. It's just showing the top. Okay, so I'm not hiking the real moment. But now we're going to take another piece of netting. Netting is cheap, but it's great. You can also use so sheer or nylon tree hole for this kind of stuff. And you'll see too, a lot of the stuff I'm doing bigger than I need because we like to take away what doesn't need to be there instead of trying to match up edges of things. We're usually like eliminating until there's a costume. It's kind of how we sew stuff. So now I go back around following the line that I stitched earlier. So we've got even more net in here, but now we're going to trim it. This is a good place for pinking shears. And if you're like us, you have four pair of pinking shears that only cut for a meter or two here and there. So you got to find the sweet spot, right? Okay. It doesn't feel like it's a six hour We did the six hour pack one day. For me, it just flew by. Yeah, for him, it did. I read a lot of Rachel stories. read a lot of history, learned about <laughs> working monkey for a New York in 1912. <laughs> Can't get it now. So I'm clipping this sucker. So here's where like pinking shears would be great. So now, this next pass, I'm going to turn it inside out again. So no, 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 no. Well, I hear it. So now I have an inside hole that's finished off very nicely, and we use netting to finish it off. And we have an outside edge pipe, and also finished with netting. So we don't have any raw growth stuff underneath to look at or throw over time. I don't know why the dish shape. What was I thinking? It's a, like a no. It's a no. <laughs> so then you've got that. So you can continue this piping the whole way around. But what's really cool is you can use it to let other elements show through. Or another thing that we've done in the past is just take an element and stick it. Take an element and stick it in there. Mark, mark, cut that out really pretty. There you go. So you could, you just think of it as like a thing you can do, because like it would be fun to pipe up here, you know, to, to make a narrow shape. Um, you can take stuff like this, make a couple different color shapes or sizes, and then start to overlap them. Two in any shape you want. We just wanted to show you that idea, and let's show it. Stick it on the tutu, just because that I think sometimes that helps our brains. You know, you can just do all sorts of all sorts of stuff like that, but make nice tidy edges, and you're not trying to fold an edge over and press it. Uh, so did you like get rid that. of the net in the hole? I left the net in the hole, so I left the net. In the, the second, the last time we put netting on, I left it. Um, what you could do is if you wanted, you could stitch in the ditch around this piping and then cut the netting out so that you just have this beautiful shape with a hole in it and no netting inside the hole. Or leave the netting if you think you might want to put something else inside there. This reminds me like those sugar eggs with the seam. Okay, we're going to show you one more. We're doing good. Thumbs ups. I need the gratification, you guys. Yes. Yes? Okay, thank you. Okay, so let me get the next last stitch box. Um, this one I've done a few different times for some different companies. It's Some people call it a Symphony and C cascaded ribbon, but there's actually a bunch of older ballets where this is used. I'm going to point it if it's usually for that. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, how I've come up with doing this. I've made a set for Houston and a set for Joffrey. And it's not just in Symphony and C. There's a bunch of older Karinska ballets. 
Uh, and there's some London Royal Ballets that use this same similar idea of cascading ribbon. So I'm going to show you how we make this cascading ribbon stay so pretty because um, there's guts to it. It's actually on a piece of ridge lean stitch to grow grain ribbon so that it can still boing and bounce against the guy. But that's how you keep your loops looking nice because if you just tried to tack your loops on the netting, the netting shifts and moves and they're never going to look amazing. Um, so I'm going to show you how we did this and that will be our last thing. Is that pretty? Rachel said you could put it on the door at Christmas. Um, so go back. We're going to stay at the table for a little bit and talk about the different parts. So the first thing you need is, a, is your pattern. And your pattern needs to be something old and halfable. And I just start with something long. And I like to make a sample because I, I'm not good at figuring stuff out without touching it. I, that, no, matter, no matter what I say, it sounds dirty. Um, so you need something that's mirrored so that when I fold it this way, it's still, I can put my seam underneath it. I think that makes sense. So you want something that's mirrored. But um, so that it's folded in half, you can start to get an idea of this is kind of the width of my bottom loops. And this is kind of the width of my top loops. And these loops also have something going on inside of them to make them nice and loopy. Um, so here's how I like to space out my thing, right? So I have this trapezoid, and I want to divide it. And it's not, there's like some geometry going on where you want to go like, oh, the first one should be 6 inches and 5 inches and 4 inches. And then all of a sudden you have a quarter of an inch for the top one. Then you try, oh, maybe it's nine, seven, five. Just use the shape you've already got. So I've got this width, right? I'm going to just fold this up. So now I have a new width, right? So I'm going to keep folding. I, I think this makes sense. Does, it, does this make sense to you what I did? I'll show it again. So I just keep folding to figure out where the different parts of my ribbon bump are going to happen. But I'm using the width across the piece to determine how high up to go. So, okay, so now, now I've got these points going on. And that's where my folds are. That's how I'm figuring out kind of the rise or the run of my bow, of my stair of bow. So now, I think, did that make sense to you, Rachel, what I did? Yeah, everyone loves this. Yeah, that's how I figured out how high I need to go. And I only know that trick because I have figured that out more than once some very difficult frustrating ways. And you can actually use this this kind of cascade ribbon loop thing on a bunch of stuff. Okay, so all I did was I marked a mark wherever the top of one of my folds was, or you could mark a mark across wherever the bottom of your fold is. Those marks are places where we're going to gather. So um, TV magic, I have already cut out my piece. So I cut out this, this is my same thing, I cut it out a quarter of an inch bigger. And here's the next thing you need to see. I am going to put a piece of horse hair into the inside of this when I sew this seam together. So let's go to the sewing machine. We're going to do two things at the sewing machine. We're going to put this piece of horse hair inside of our cascaded ribbon. There's a cream and blue tutu that I bet everybody's thinking of that has this type of ribbon too. Um, so I'm going to put my right sides together. I do this on the serger, but I'm going to do it on the sewing machine for now. And I'm going to stitch in a piece of horse hair a quarter inch from the edge of my seam allowance. And I don't want to stretch the horse hair. If anything, I want to ease a little bit on or lay it absolutely flat. That's one thing we're going to do with the machine. 
The other thing we're going to do with the machine is take a piece of origiline. And if you don't want this to be so stiff, cut the origiline in half. Only use half of the bars of your origiline. But I'm going to take a piece of origiline that's kind of, and make a sample or two of this before you cut out eight or 12 or however many you're going to do. Um, I'm going to take a piece of origiline. And to my piece of origiline, I am going to stitch a piece. This is the last one we're doing. We're almost done. I'm going to stitch a piece of twill tape or grosgrain ribbon along it so that I have something easier to sew on. And you would match this to your tutu so that if people look underneath, they're not seeing something weird. I'm doing it in black so it shows. So let's go to the sewing machine for the last time uh, today. This is like the fireworks of the day, right? Mm -hmm. I should put on a non-piping foot, foot, but okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pin this nicely, right? But I'm gonna just put one pin in it, and I'm laying a piece of horse hair. The horse hair in the originally, thats the secret. Um, I'm gonna lay my horse hair on and stitch it a quarter inch in the neck. It really is the secret. It really is the secret. <laughs> And a lady's foam curler. For real, right? Now we're going to do this. Oh, oh my God, why am I? I went a little drunk. Actually, this horse here in the tube thing, you can use it in lots of places. Sew it nicer than I did. Now, I'm also going to take my little piece of ridgeline. And you can iron the ridgeline on low with a little seam and flatten it out. I really do. I'm going to fold my ribbon over the ridgeline so the edge is And I'm just doing a straight stitch down the middle. Because I want to be able to get into the ribbon. Or a small zigzag is all right, too. And you got to make a sample of this for five. Is that one inch horse hair? Uh, yeah. But the smaller would work, too. So now, let's go to the ironing board. Actually, we'll do the rest of the ironing board. Let me bring this and this and some of this. Trip with your feet and some and of that. Feel. I know my bloody foot here. Um, then, we don't want that anymore. Okay, so let's flatten out our piece of originally. If I go like this, it's better. Mm -hmm. It originally needs a weight on it, but we get the idea. I'll put some zone on it. Then you want to turn this thing inside out. I should have used the stitch over a string thing, but I didn't. And you want to use like a non cheapo fabric if you're going to put this much time into doing a ribbon. Like you want like nice silk satin or duchess satin. Or something with a little bit of give that's not super melty. Okay, so now that that's turned inside out, we've got this piece of horse here in there in the seam underneath. So now we want to press it. And just keep centering the seam better than I am. And this is what we've got now. Now, if you'll see what happens if we just start to try making our cascade. We end up with these pieces that are wider than the part covering them up. So that's where these lines on our pattern came into play. 
So now I'm going to just lay this on there. And with my disappearing pen, I'm going to mark these lines across my beautiful thing. You can cut this on the bias too if you want to get like ultra, ultra lovely. It'll it'll lay a little bit nicer. And I'll do this in two spots. And you're going to take a hand sewing needle. I always get the frayed piece of sewing needle. Ah. I think I have one fibers. So. Yeah. Where we these spots we've marked. You're going to hand gather all the way through all of your layers, each one of them. I'm going to just do two. So you're going to hand gather that and squish it about, you know, to, so it's about half the width of the line. And I'm going to do the next one and salt it. So you'll hand gather all of these. It's not fast, but it sure looks nice. And hand gather there. We didn't show a Wendy bowl. We'll do that next week live. Yeah. Or as a recording. Just everybody needs to see how to make an easy Wendy bowl. Um, so we've got this now, right? Okay. We're on our way. That horse here in there is going to keep this looking just lovely. And then the other thing is... Uh, if you need a curve, you need something round to press it over. So now we're going to take our ribbon, or our, our cascade ribbon and our bone thing, and you just kind of start playing with it, because as I've told everybody to make a sample first. So you're going to hand sew or machine sew that on, then you're going to fold down your next bump, right? And you're going to hand sew or machine sew that on. I like to pin them all first. So you're going to just keep working your way up with your ribbons, hooking them to the ridgeling so that you have a pleasing amount of space and some sort of relation to width going on as you work your way up. So you're just going to anchor them all to the boning first. Then Right now, if we left them just like that, they don't want to lay down on top of each other. So after you machine stitch that or hand stitch that, then you're going to go in each one and push. You're going to push the horse hair down and put another tack. So that, see, so now we've actually we're forcing that ribbon to lay down. Then we'll put the next one in and we'll actually put a little tack to force the ribbon down. So you, you just keep gathering and pinning. And I'd say pin it all until you get some some amount of like rational gradation going on. And the next trick is to pin the ridgeling to your ironing surface. And I just take a foam roller and stick it inside each loop. And get it looking really nice and stretch it a little bit to steam it. Here's where I would normally swear. <laughs> so now we're going to give each one a little hairdo. Right? And if you let it cool off a little bit, it'll stay like that a little bit better. And get way down into your gather too. Just like hair. Just like hair. So then, now I only need one piece of curling. You're gonna do. You're gonna address every single one, and make sure it looks good before you steam it. Right? And steam your hands just a little bit. 
then you can do any number of things on the bottom, and I'll show you what I did. Um, I, I'll show you the shape I use. So it's kind of like a bow, it's kind of like a man's necktie bow, but fake. Um, I just drew first my bow shape that I wanted. And, and then actually to make this hang a little more luscious, I cut it on the bike. So even though I have this fold here, I cut this at a perfect 45 degree angle. So this shape, you can stitch around or serge around. Then you know how we turn it inside out? We just put a cut in the fold and we pull it through the cut. Then we just zigzag over that after we pressed it nice because it gets hidden on the inside. And then I used what was left over. I used the leftover piece of my largest cascade and I folded it in nice and that's what became the middle of my bow, like that, right? Then since my bow is so wide, I can either leave it droopy like that, or what I did on this one is I took and I folded it in once and stitched the back. So then I know that looks awful, but that's what you end up with, is like that. That kind of bow. So actually, if I unstitch my, my little back piece here, you can see, maybe I tied too many up. You can see that I started with that big shape, and then I gathered the thick part of that shape. So first I had a big droopy bow like this, which is cute, but I turned it into like a double bow. Okay? Let's stick that on the tutu, take a couple questions, and call her at the end of the day. Oh, it's so pretty. So, you know, eight of those looks like a million dollars. Why'd you get out of the shop? Why did I get out of the shop? Because <laughs> I want to iron my bow really quick. Oh. <laughs> so, any questions? Really into the lot. webinar. Oh, good. Thank you. Give that person a discount. What did you do at the top of the ridge lane so it doesn't pull? Oh, I'll tell you. So, so we've got this chunk of bow, this top part of bow running where there's no folds or bumps. You just anchor, you come down a couple inches, anchor that to the ridgeline, then go in and cut the ridgeline. So the ridgeline actually ends up not being within the like top inch and a half of the bosque. But it's, it's pretty springy and, um, the boys, the boys can get in there without trouble. What? Uh, they, you know, they can partner with it. Um, but you could do all kinds of stuff. There's some old Kerenska tutus where they have rows of bows hanging off the higher part of the kind of cascaded bow. So you can really, you can really get nuts with this technique. Uh, there, I mean, it's just the sky's the limit. It's so cute. Karinska did a lot of bows too where they would cut this really long and then they would take the long edge and tuck it back on each side so that it made a bow like that. More like that. So just, you know, think of the things you can do in paper and you can do them in fabric, only prettier. Any other questions? Because that's kind of... We got through what we were hoping to get through. Just lots of positive comments. Oh, good. And hopefully everybody um, will take away something and turn it into their own idea. Ah, oh, that's so cute like that. So um, we'll put this bow pattern uh, for free a free PDF next week. How does that sound? And then a video on those bound pedals. Oh, yes. We didn't get to that. We will make a video on making a bound pedal. And we will put this, um, we're going to call it a Kerenska bow because that's where I got the idea for this shape of bow from. Looking at loads and loads and loads of tutus. And figuring out what's on the bias, what's on the straight. Some of the original ones with this didn't have the horse hair. I'd like to think that was my idea to add it, but who knows? There's so many ways to do stuff. Anything else?
You got oh, a bonus 28 it. minutes on the house. Thank you, everybody. Here's to Rachel. Get on camera. Come say thank you. No. We both still have it's our pajamas boss. on. I'm going to go see what's going <laughs> Look how doing. terrible we look. <laughs> look at my hair. <laughs> we made some pretty crafts here. Bye. Hold on. I can't oh, find the thing that ends. Buy it. Where's the I'll take another picture of this. <laughs> of what? This bow. It's so pretty. <laughs> Goodbye. It wants my.